Yeah. But since then, no, there's been very few other than them wanting to pin up, pick up their um, voting uh, material that comes here for her. Got it. And those two big incidents, um, we don't communicate. You know, he tried to tell me his email doesn't work, but I used to fix his stuff. I know it works. I'm like, yeah. That. So, you know, it, it's just been contentious ever since then. That makes sense. And, and I don't, for a young, like my sink in my bathroom doesn't work. So I use the sink in the laundry area. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to him when it's going to be an expensive fix. Yeah. Fix the bathroom. So I haven't gone to him. That so makes that, sense. I know that that's futile. Another argument just going to stress yeah. me. For sure. Um, let's see. A couple more questions about the, the rent during the pandemic. Um, you said that there were some months you paid the 25%. There were some months you paid the, the 50% to appease him. You said, um, how do you sort of decide what, what to pay? Yeah. Can you walk me through a little bit more about, uh, how you decide what to pay? Well, like I said, when the, when they came out with the ordinance and I read it and understood it, you had to pick, you, you initially had to pay 25, at least 25% to, to fall under this umbrella of kind of protection in a sense mm-hmm. that you know, when it all ends, you can't get evicted kind of thing. So I was paying that. And then in December, I decided, okay, I'm going to, I cut so many things back and I had enough and I don't need that much. Right. I just, that's one of the things you have learned in this whole thing is how little you need. I grew up, I, do, I have a garden in the back that I get all my produce from now at all, but I get a lot of my produce from all the time now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I decided again to kind of appease him. I would pay the 50%. And then as I learned about the different ordinances and I realized that, you know, one that when they started the whole rental assistance program, they, I applied that day, I, you know, figured out how to get in and get some assistance through Twitter and stuff like that um, because of what I do and was able to apply after a couple of days, unlike a lot of people, the initial website. And then there was no response. And I went that whole time. And I'm like, OK, if this thing might not, it's more like a lottery. I might not actually get any of those money ever. And so it still might be that process of me having to repay all this money that I have back rent on. And so that was one of the reasons why I started paying the 50% because I didn't want to get too much more into the rears to have to pay it. And then two is when I stopped doing 50% and went back to 25 and considered not paying anything at all, I was like, I should not pay the 50% or anything so mm-hmm. that I could save it so that if I do eventually have to pay down the road, I'll, I will have to I'll be, you know, finding another place to rent. My, you know, my big concern has been that because my income is limited and, not, and has been nil for so long that I'm going to have a hard time going and renting in another place because the new landlord is going to want to look at my credit, which would be kind of screwed up. And I understand I'm not going to be on the list, but that still doesn't mean I'm not, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's still that risk. Is being able to get up, you know, get another place to rent. So even if I got another place to rent or stay here for a period of time and this moratorium ends, my mindset is I'm going to have to pay $2,000 to $2,500 a month plus whatever – payment plan I arranged with my landlord to repay. So if that's a thousand dollars a month, that means I'm going to have to be paying thirty five hundred dollars right, yeah. a month, which yeah. I don't get, and which is far exceeds you know. And I to make to have that be fifty percent of my income, I'd have to be making seven thousand dollars a month. Absolutely, all those calculations have come into play to try to figure out. All right, should I pay? Should I not? Right. Yeah. I decided to pay the twenty five instead of the fifty. All right, so that. You know, if something changed, right? So, I, yeah, so that, that, that answers your question. Yeah, and that leads into the next question, really, really smoothly, which is: um, Is there anything that would make you decide or force you to move? And then, if so, where would you move? <laughs> I would move today if I could, just yeah. to not deal with the stress of dealing with him and them, right? And just, 
I don't want to live here anymore. I was, like I said, I was going to move at the beginning of last year. My daughter wants to move. She, you know, teenager doesn't understand. She's like, we you just move. There's an apartment over. She's always sending me stuff on Zillow or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, apartment here. We can, I said, Michael, we can't move because I'm not, I don't have an income that I can show to be able to afford to pay. That so, makes sense. Answer your question. I don't know. Yeah. What the circumstances outside of me getting some additional income, finding a job, which I'm 60 years old. I'm in IT and I'm in social media. Mm-hmm. Social media even more so is more of a young people's uh, business in, a, in other people's minds, even though I provide so many different, uh, such a breadth of skill set and experience, but still I'm 60 years old company, yeah. you know, see that can find that. I, you know, I've had a hard time finding any additional work. That makes sense. So explaining that to her about why we can't move and just go into another apartment. I don't know. I, you know, I'd move today if I won the lottery. Hopefully I did tonight. If you, uh, if you had the funds to move, would you choose to stay in the same neighborhood? Would you, would you move elsewhere? I, you know, I actually, you know, when you, when I, when I, um, think about that from the standpoint of, I don't know, winning the lottery. Right? Mm-hmm. I tell myself that I would, I, you know, would want to stay in this neighborhood. I grew up here over on the other side of Crenshaw and Angel's Vista in that area. And then, um, went to, I've grown up here, right? Yeah, absolutely. I moved for a short period. We're down the beach, all white area, you know, 1990 through 98, I guess it was. You never feel, um, welcome or comfortable or accepted, you know. Mm-hmm. Loved it. I loved the beach area and I was single at the time. Decided to move and buy a house, which and get married, which is a mistake, but <laughs> um but at the same time, the the, the things that we deal with in the Merck Park and in you know the Crenshaw area in a sense, the helicopters, the unrest, the mm-hmm. you know, the police situation, the homelessness, all that stuff. I think I would move away for a time. And invest here and eventually come back. Mm, interesting. I don't know what I would do, right? Yeah. I know I would probably, the one thing that I would do if I could move today is I'd move closer to my daughter's high school in, in Hamilton High School, which is over in the Fairfax district. Yep. So it's easier for her to get to school. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to give you a list of a few things and you can just say whether you've would say you've experienced this during the pandemic or not. Uh, so the first is housing discrimination. Yeah. I mean, in a sense that I, I don't know if it, I don't want to say it's racial discrimination, but it was housing discrimination in terms of people understanding the plight yeah. of needing or wanting to go somewhere. And you feel the discrimination because in Los Angeles and California, you can't fucking afford to move. Mm-hmm. The stuff that is out there is just so, you know, that in its essence is discrimination. They're not even giving you options. Yep. I understand that. Of where you could go to be able to afford to live on a, you know, and I, I made relatively good money, but it's mm-hmm. still a push. I understand that. Have you faced, um, Illegal rent raises above three percent. Yeah, he tried to, he, he, you know, over the course of time. You know, I, I, I said I had the family thing. And he came in, you know, every year or so and said, "Oh, I'm going to raise this." And then I think the last one that he did was probably 2019 or 18. Mm-hmm. He tried to raise it to whatever it was, and I was like, "Dude, that's like, you know, a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars more than it was." Yeah, you know, a large, well, well over. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I, you know, I can do whatever I want. Single family. Single, yeah. single family helps. I don't, it doesn't, all that California rental doesn't apply. And it didn't. Yeah. Right? It did come back and change it. Right. He never changed the actual agreement, which mm-hmm. I had. But he did say, okay, you know, I'm only going to raise it $50 or whatever it was. Okay. Yeah. But that, he only did that because of the family thing. But they've constantly, you know, I can I know I can get twenty five, three thousand dollars for this house. Are you kidding me? Especially yeah. if it's not the house next door was about to sell for one point two. When I moved in here it was like three hundred the houses were going for three hundred thousand. Crazy. Crazy. Because of the metro. Uh, the whole yeah. metro and gentrification crap. Yeah. 
Have, have, has your landlord ever refused to 